Hey guys, tonight we're driving a 2015 Dodge Viper. This has an 8.4 liter V10, makes 645 horsepower. We have a six speed manual transmission. This was the base model back in the day. My good friend Tom just picked this up. He also had a 2003 Viper SRT10, the convertible. There he is, say hello, Tom. Hey guys. <laughs> so we're just gonna walk you around this real quick and then we'll take it for a POV night drive. We're gonna be taking it easy tonight. Again, we're gonna be kind of cruising around in this thing. Uh, we have a slightly older set of tires on this. These are Pirelli P0s in 355-30R19 in the rear, and then 295s in the front, I believe. Uh, anyway, those are gonna get replaced here pretty soon because they've got some years on them. And with a car like this, you want a nice, fresh set of sticky tires with a modern compound and uh, 645 horsepower. You can't have enough grip. So let's pop the hood. I don't even know how you'd pop the hood. Is it from the outside? Is it from the inside? All Vipers are from the outside. All right. Bolt. Man. Gen oh, 3 oh, and 4, the hood, re uh, hood release is in the front bumper, actually. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. You drove this back from Virginia. I did, yeah. And how, what gas mile did you get? I managed 20.4 miles per gallon over 702 miles. That's amazing. From an 8.4 liter V10. Yeah. All right. First Viper with cruise control. I'd say I used it for probably 400 miles or so, and that was definitely part of what helped me achieve that gas mileage. This is just living in luxury. You've got all the modern amenities. Reverse camera. You've got a reverse camera. I you know. could probably fit this with CarPlay eventually. Cool. All right, let's take it for a drive. I'll let you close the hood. It's so cool that they've kept with this massive hood. <laughs> it's got to be one of the biggest individual body panels for sale in an auto in a car. Since, since the earlier generation Vipers. Yeah. Those used to come all the way down to... Jeez. <laughs> this thing is gorgeous, man. Absolutely stunning. Nice fat five-spoke wheels. What was this? Uh, what was the MSRP on this when it was new for the base model? It was just short of eighty-six thousand. Eighty-six grand. Okay. So they just lowered the MSRPs in fifteen when they switched back from SRT to Dodge Vipers. Cool. All right, let's take this for a drive. Again, we're just going to be cruising in this tonight until we get some better rubber on here, but. Um, yeah, I wanted to kind of start off and make a little bit of a video series on this Viper just because it'd be fun. And there aren't a lot of Vipers out on YouTube. I was actually thinking about buying one of these myself. Well, not a fifth gen, a third or fourth gen. But um, yeah, Tom decided to go ahead and beat me to the punch, which is just fine. All the benefits without the uh, risks. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Speaking of risks, though, you did swing for a factory warranty, an extended warranty on this. Extra, what, three, four years? Three years. Three years? Cool. That's nice that uh, Dodge still offers something like that. Yeah, just, I like to drive my vehicles. I'm hoping I can put 10, 12, 15,000 miles on this over the next two years. And it just seemed like the best way to enjoy it without concern. Yeah. No, it's, you, how many miles do you put on your old Viper? You put quite a few. I put 20,000 miles on my old Viper in two years. <laughs> That's awesome. Look at that reverse camera. Solves all your problems. Clutch engagement point is very high in the pedal. Steering's nice and heavy. I've got to admit, I've really only driven Vipers on track. And uh, except for your third gen. This is the only time I've driven one on the street. Revs drop pretty quickly between gears. Definitely no rev hang issues here. placement. And of course, 
get the side pipes right next to you. Zero wind buffeting in this cabin. That's kind of cool. You can just roll with the windows down. Yeah, we're recording this with binaural microphones, in-ear microphones, and usually I'll wear uh, these little earmuffs to prevent wind buffeting from it, affecting the mics, but in this, I don't have any earmuffs on. We've got the windows down, and it's really nice. It's a really great car to cruise in. That's kind of a surprise. I found that the more aerodynamic modern cars get, the worse they are to experience with the windows down. Supra, new BRZ, new GR86, they're all some of the worst offenders. But I guess there's there's a lot still old school about this Viper. with the top on there was a ton 
bit more expensive, but worth the price, and these values aren't going anywhere. It's going to hold its value. And you can get a warranty on it. It's a win-win. Dude, yeah. I'm so glad you got this. You had a C6 Corvette Grand Sport for a couple years. I did. You Enjoyed that. On your video, yeah. That was a great car. I loved it for what it was. Yeah. That car was extremely Taylor driver friendly. So, even, I mean, there's winter tires for that car. It's fast too. It is. It's very quick. It's basically the same motor as what's in the ATSV minus. What is it? Something about the. So um, the motor itself is nearly identical. The only difference is the push rods. Okay. The material they use. The difference is on the turbos and coolant. spot for the sound because it reminds me of like I grew up with five cylinder Volvos this is 2x a five cylinder Volvo and then some but uh, it's just that that verbal that V10 verbal is so so cool and the power this thing makes is insane it is there's just a torque monster third gear 2200 rpm Shifter. You have to be kind of quick with your inputs once everything warms up, but it really rewards kind of more spirited and aggressive driving. This car just <laughs> it encourages you to go faster, it encourages you, it goads you on to drive it like a race car a little bit. Bad influence. Oh, it's a it's a really good bad influence. Shifter's interesting. Everything is kind of angled forward a little bit. A little bit like uh, a little Cobra. bit like the Shelby Cobra, yeah. <laughs> Stiffer with the throw on this, it's perfect. I 
lot of time in these fifth gen Vipers and one, one week we were filming and shooting one out at MIS, Michigan International Speedway with Auto Week and they were timing zero to 60 runs and the guy who was doing the driving had some experience as a drag racer. He was kind of struggling to get consistent launches out of the car but he could just absolutely bang gears in this with this TR6060. It really responds well to fast shifts and high performance driving. Um, so that's that's probably one of the most impressive things about this 5th gen Viper. And they've kept this transmission since like the 08s, right? I think. Correct. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure exactly or in which they switched from the T56 to the TR6060. But, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure they added it with a 4th gen, like 3rd gen to 4th gen. They added more power. They switched up the V10 a little bit, uh, made a bunch of tweaks. Yeah, it's really, really nice. Definitely a highlight of this car. Um, I'm curious to see how this handles with a good set of tires. I can feel around the corners like they're a little sketchy. Everything seems to be pretty warm, well warmed up tonight. We're not having too many issues breaking traction, but um, yeah, you definitely want to get a sticky set of. Uh, tires on. On your previous Viper, you had a set of Pilot Super Sports, and they just hooked up for days. They almost hooked up all the way through first. Like, it was it was really impressive. Almost, yeah. Almost. Yep. When those Vipers came out, they were, I think they were just sketchy because tire technology and compound just weren't as good back in that, in the early 2000s or mid to late 90s. And now, we have some pretty impressive compounds. We're kind of limited on, on options with these cars, but what is available is pretty sticky and pretty track righted. Yeah, can, there's, uh, there's a set can help. from Continental available and a set from Michelin available. Okay. Both should be fantastic. Yeah. Not cheap. What is it, about two grand for a set? Yeah. Man, this thing just feels full on race car. The pedal box, the steering inputs, the weight of everything, the shifter. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, the pedal box is not for clown shoes. No. Definitely a great car to have. running shoes <laughs> yeah you'll probably do a couple track days in this it's kind of what it's built for a year. yeah I'm excited for that these are pretty good to go out of the box on track aren't they I mean brakes cooling yeah from works. my understanding that's, yeah. that's correct people do upgrade some small things here and there uh, brake pads for example yeah. if they're looking for something specific more um initial bite or whatnot but generally from the from the factory you can take them to a track and beat them up cool and uh ralph Gilles once said on jay leno that his favorite viper was the base model because it's the lightest it's the simplest and ACRs and those are fun but for the prices that they're going for I don't know I think this is this scratches the itch it's enough it's not a track car for me it's a daily that I will track occasionally yep it couldn't be more perfect car that demands all of your attention all the time. You called me earlier today <laughs> and we were having a very simple conversation yeah. about when we were going to meet to film this video. <laughs> you couldn't focus on it. And I, and I said, may I call you back? I can't, I can't focus right now. I'm driving. And I realized after we hung up, 
I never really said something like that while driving a car before. <laughs> I'm using Bluetooth. I, you were coming through the speakers. I was using the microphone, all that. I, I just couldn't do it all at once. Uh, oops, I missed my exit. That's kind of the best thing about this car, though, is it really demands your attention. And it's like, you know, playing a sport or going out and working out or, you know, doing an activity that demands 100% concentration. It's it's kind of a release. It's a little bit of a getaway. It's a mental vacation. It's a I, exactly. I describe soccer when I play, but it's so I would I would say it's the same thing. It's exactly a mental vacation. A little three pointer here. Yikes. Yeah, not for the timid, but so rewarding to those who are brave enough. shows we're gonna maybe do a track day lots of fun times ahead and uh, we'll be sure to film as much of it as we can and share it with you guys so anyway that's gonna be a wrap for this one dude congrats thank you yeah I'm excited this is uh, this is pretty exciting cool yeah tires are definitely warm yeah they're throwing stuff left and right nice and sticky <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna let it idle and uh, do another walk around and that'll be it. Cool man. Well hey, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. We'll uh <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs> My face hurts from grinning. <laughs> oh, I love that they stuck with the side pipes on these cars too. I mean, there, there were a few necessities, so <laughs> it V10, had to... <laughs> manual transmission, yeah, side pipes, yeah, and that's about it. I just like that it adds another element of danger to the car.
It's so spectacular. This is by far the most connected car I've had. So suspension, brakes, steering, throttle response, all of it is just so in tune with one another. I yeah. Don't, like I've never felt more connected to a vehicle ever. And usually in cars like that, there's something lacking. Like there's something that just kind of falls short like of expectations one of the, one or that's. Of the four yeah, one of the four the of those is a little bit disappointing. And in this, they're all, they all, they all match up. Like, it's a cohesive package. It's and, really and, well tuned. And that's with shot tires. Yeah.